Hello, mi gente. Ms. Malcolm Hughes back with another book review. And today I am somewhere that is not my home, so my background is different, but still here for a book review. So let's get into it. Today I will be reviewing Divorcing Atlanta by author Timothy McCann. So Divorcing Atlanta was actually a really interesting story and did not go in the direction that I thought it would. The story is about four individuals who are connected. This is actually one of my favorite styles of writing where each chapter is based on a different character and then somehow their stories weave together. It's I've loved it since I was a child. I think like Eric Jerome Dickey was probably the person who really made me like that style of writing. But that's what the story, the premise is. It's four individuals who are striving for greatness on their journeys and somehow all of their life paths cross and they're connected. So two of the couple, there's two couples, four individuals, but two couples. But we do get to hear from each of their perspectives. And like I said, all of them are striving for greatness. On one end, there is a wife who is married to a congressman and she has spent her life dedicated to his dreams and his goals. That aspect of the story is really interesting because she is from the South, who comes from Grace's parents. Her father is in the Klan, and she ends up marrying this Black man. And the Black man is the congressman. She loves him. She reflects um, often on the fact that she didn't end up like her parents. And even though they kind of disowned her, she just reflects on the fact that she was able to not continue to push their beliefs of hatred and racism and that she has this beautiful family that she's created and she spent her entire life supporting this man. Now, her husband, he is currently on the path for a presidential run. He is a congressman, but it's clear that they are starting to rev up for the White House. He is problematic on a lot of different levels. So is she. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. So that's our first couple and two of the individuals. On the other side, we have a husband and a wife. The husband is a pastor and the wife is an attorney who's thinking of shifting into politics. And they have their own issues. Each of them have childhood trauma that they're trying to unpack and trying to do it together. Um, they both lost same-sex parents at a young age. So that's a super critical piece that's included here. He lost his father at a young age. She lost her mother. And that impacts their relationship into adulthood. Now, how do these couples become connected? I'll get to it. But first, let me say this. The story begins immediately. You just plop into someone's head who is in distress. Life has dealt him a hard card as of late. He is considering robbing someone because he's so broke. And then eventually he shoots himself. That's the ending of the first chapter. So this book, actually it starts with chapter 28. The book kind of works itself back. You start with chapter 28 and then you go to chapter one. I thought it was an interesting twist and I liked it. So we get dropped into this extreme drama, right? Immediately. Um, and I always say there's no drama like church drama. Um, so the first person in that chapter is the pastor. That's who we're introduced to. And he is really having a hard time. He's written a letter to his son. We know that he's contemplating ending it or robbing someone and ended up going to jail. He may be murdered. It's just hard. That's what we find out. And so from that moment, we get to go back in time and unpack the story and really realize how he got here and why he's here currently. And just the decisions, not only for himself, but for others that really led him to this moment. So as it turns out, he and his wife, even though picture perfect to others, are having a really hard time. She feels as if he is putting the church before her and he feels as if she's not being a good first lady. She's supposed to be there and support him. She's given too much time to work. He doesn't want her to go into politics. So the, that creates some conflict and tension. And eventually, because she is a powerful attorney and she's great and brilliant at her job, she ends up being tapped by the congressman to do some work with her, with him. And these two get together. Of course, he's having problems at home. At home, We learn, oh, she's having problems at home with her husband. We learn that the congressman is a habitual cheater. Um, he has a history of cheating. 
and scheming and just not living up to his position and lying often, um, whatever it benefits him. So these two inevitably end up having an affair. And it's just all downhill from there. <laughs> it's just all downhill from there. I will say that was the one scene of the book that was a little odd for me. Just the progression of the affair. I get that she did it from like hurt and anger. But him, we had just read a chapter where he was reflecting on her. And he really discusses that she's like a six in his book. And back in the day, he would have been about it. But he's being faithful. And he wouldn't do it. And then the next chapter, it turns around. He's like approaching her and it's this whole thing and he's been aggressive about it and I was just like wait what you just said you were faithful and maybe that's the writer plan on the fact that not only does this character the congressman lie to everyone else he also lies to himself about who he actually is he thinks that he is a good guy but he's manipulative and he lies and he does whatever he wants to when he wants to even though I will say this about the character, he's not a character that you hate. He is intended to be the villain, but you don't really hate him because I do think that he went into it for the right reasons and I'm not even going to say lost his way. I'm not sure he was ever going to be anyone other than who he is, but I do think he went into politics desiring to create change. Um... So yeah, so he's not like just a villain. No one in this story, I will say, is a villain. And I do think that's what I appreciated about it, is the fact that everyone is a full human with flaws and all. So I thought that was like super, just like a super dope reality because humans are flawed and humans are multifaceted and none of us are perfect. But the fact that every decision and choice we make impacts others. Once these two have an affair... I don't want to give all the details away, but everything changes for everyone drastically. Things go downhill. But I think the resolutions for everyone are worth it. So I guess the big question in the end was, can people change? Do you revert back to what you know? And what is justice, right? What is justice? What is a new start? So I think those are the big messages and the clear questions. One thing I would say about this book is that I really actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Timothy McCann is a pastor and an independent author. When I received the book, I just didn't know what to expect. There wasn't a lot going on going around about it. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to give this a chance and see what's here. And I think just going into it with just that optimism and just the willingness to see wherever it will take me really helped. I do think it was really good. I think he's a good writer. I think that he was able to create these characters that are really captivating and they draw you in and you root for them and you want to like see what will happen. And I just remember so often I'm just laughing out loud or talking to my friend about the book and they're not reading the book at all. But it's just like, oh my, this is so crazy or people are crazy or wow, right? <laughs> or there were a lot of good gems dropped too. So things to make you ponder and reflect. And as you all know, I really love that. So I think the book was well written. Again, great characters, a storyline that drew you in and never really let you go. And I would say, like, my friends heard me, like, rant about different books. And one thing we both noted is even though I would be like, oh, my gosh, this book is so crazy or that's insane. Not one time did I ever say, I don't want to read this book. I continued um, wanting to read it and had that desire to finish it. And once I got closer to the end, I slowed down because I didn't want, really want it to be over. And that's always a good sign of a really good book. So those are the good aspects of the book let's get into some flaws because there are some again there were so there were typos um i wish that this would have had a final edit from someone else other than whomever the individuals were who edited it um so i think that though there were numerous typos none of them were so severe that it distracted me from the story i knew what the author was trying to say whether it was a misspelled word or where it's, it should have been a comma um just punctuation so it did not distract from the story in any way. There was sometimes just language used 
um, by some of the characters. And I'm just like, who says that? Like, no, no one says that. Or no one I know says that. So that gave me pause. Like, hmm. Um, so that was just, uh, and I don't think that people don't say it. I just think that I've never heard anyone, like, really use it or no one around me speaks in that manner. I think that in and of itself doesn't take away from the book. It just gave me pause. Like, it did put me off from the book just a little bit. But I think he was trying to be true to his characters. I just didn't think that, like, certain, um, slurs were necessary. But, um, to each his own. And then also, again, the uh, fair scene, I thought I progressed a little too rapidly. I would have liked some more build up for that. Um, but I do think that the writer had a good insight of the characters. He had a good insight of the backgrounds and the lives that they lead. And none of it felt inauthentic. I will say that. Even if it felt like it was progressing too rapidly, none of it felt inauthentic. Everything felt as if it were true and honest. And I was glad that I picked the book up. I honestly was. I was glad that I decided to read it and to give it a fair chance. So, overall, if I was to rate this book on a scale of A to F, I would give it a solid B. I think that it was a good book. Um, I think the author did a good job. I think, the again, the characters were cap captivating. The story was intriguing. And I was really into it. Um, there was even some tidbits that made you ponder. Um, and just think about, like, life and the choices we all make. So... I think that it's worth reading. I would definitely say check it out. Um, give it a chance. It comes out um, on April 20th. So definitely look for it. If you see it at your bookstore or purchase it online, I definitely think it's a read that will keep you entertained. Um, and it's even though it has some heavy aspects to it, it's not a heavy read. It's still pretty light and it's jovial. I laughed a lot. Um, even though the topics themselves were somewhat heavy. So yeah, I definitely think it's worth checking out. So all right, y'all, that is it for me. I am Miss Malcolm Hughes, the one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. And until next time, continue to stay safe and be kind to each other. Odabo! Also, for those of you inquiring, I do still have buttons, my Miss Malcolm Hughes pins, and the details on how to get those are below.